Now the next question is question number 31. In the following human pedigree, the field symbol represents the affected individuals. Identify the type of given pedigree. So in the chapter principles of inheritance and variations, we have discussed about the pedigree analysis. So from the given pedigree, you have to analyze what is their abnormalities. Is it X-link recessive or autosomal recessive or X-link dominant or autosomal dominant? So for this, let us see what is the answer. So after analyzing the pedigree analysis, we have got this result. You can see here in generation 1, then in generation 2, then in generation 3 and after that the generation 4 and these are representing the carriers which has carried the disease. So um, from the pedigree analysis what you can say this is the autosomal recessive trait. So from the given options of the questions let us see. So among these four options, option number two is the correct answer that this pedigree analysis is showing the autosomal recessive trait. So this is the correct answer. Now let us move on to the next question. Now the next question is question number 32. Which one of the following animal has two separate circulatory pathways? Lizard, whale, shark or frog? Well, this is from the chapter animal kingdom. So, which among them have two separate circulatory pathway? That is the answer number 2 that is whale. So, among these four options, option number 2 is the correct answer. That means whale has two circulatory pathways. Now, let us move on to the next question. Now, the next question is question number 33. Flowers are unisexual in cucumber, china rose, onion or pea. So, this is from class 12 chapter 1 that is reproductions in organism. So, in that chapter we have discussed about the unisexual and bisexual flowers. So, among these following options what is the correct answer? The flowers which are unisexuals is in option number 1 that is cucumber is the correct answer of this question. Okay. Now let us see the next question. Now the next question is question number 34. Which one of the following fruit is parthenocarpic? Apple, jackfruit, banana, brinchel. This is a easy question from the chapter sexual reproductions in flowering plants. So in the book of the NCRT it is directly given. So which among them is the example of the fruits which is parthenocarpic? That is the option number 3 that is the banana. So, banana is an example of parthenocarpic. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 35. A pleiotropic gene is what? Options are given. It is a gene which is evolved during pleiocene. Second is it controls a trait only in combination with another gene. Third is it controls multiple traits in an individual. And the fourth is it is expressed only primitive plants. So pleiotropic genes that we have discussed in the chapter principles of inheritance and variations. So which among them is the correct answer? So a pleiotropic gene controls the multiple traits in an individual which means option number 3 is the correct answer of this question. Alright. Now let us see the next question. Now the next question is question number 36. Which of the following is not a function of the skeletal system? Storage of minerals, productions of body heat, locomotions or the productions of erythrocyte. Well, this is from the chapter locomotions and movements. So, what is the function of skeletal system? You know about that, that it is the storage of minerals, then it helps in the locomotions and also help in the production of erythrocyte. Erythrocyte means the red blood cells and it is from the bone marrow. So among these four options, option number two that says that productions of body heat that is not a function of skeletal system which means option number two is the correct answer for this question, right? Now let us move on to the next question. Now the next question is question number 37. A jawless fish 
which lay eggs in fresh water and whose amniocetes larva after metamorphosis return to the ocean is myxin neomyxin petromyxon or epterterius so among this four option what is the correct answer we have talked about this in the chapter animal kingdom so among this four option option number 3 is the correct answer that means patromyzon which is a jawless fish and it lay eggs in the fresh water and after that whose amniocetes larva after metamorphosis return to the ocean so patromyzon is the correct answer now let's see the next question now the next question is question number 38 Filiform apparatus is a characteristic feature of nucellar embryo or aleuron cell or synergids or generative cell. Well, this is a easy questions and it is direct from the NCERT textbook of the chapter sexual reproductions in flowering plants. So, among these four option, the option number three is the correct answer. That means synergids is a characteristic feature of the failure from apparatus so this is the correct answer now let's move on to the next question now the next question is question number 39 read the different components from a to d in the list given below and tell the correct order of the components with reference to their arrangement from outer side to inner side in a ud dicot stem there are four statement given like the secondary cortex then wood secondary phloem then phalem so in the chapter anatomy of the flowering plant in the last topic we have discussed about this so what is the correct answer of this how it should be arranged first is phalem next is secondary cortex third is secondary phloem and the fourth is wood which means that among this four option option number 2 is the correct answer of this questions all right now let's see the next question now the next question is question number 40 which one of the following hormone is not involved in sugar metabolism aldosterone insulin glucagon or cortisol so from the chapter chemical coordinations and integrations we have discussed about this so among this four option option number that is aldosterone is not involved in sugar metabolism so aldosterone is the correct answer for this question now let's see the next question now the next question is question number 41 golden rice is a genetically modified crop plant where the incorporated gene is meant for biosynthesis of vitamin c or omega 3 or vitamin a or vitamin b well this is also direct question from your ncert textbook of the chapter applications of biotechnology so golden right is a genetically modified crop and it is made for enriching the vitamin a that means from this four option option number 3 is the correct answer for this question now let's see the next question now the next question is question number 42 outbreeding is an important strategy of animal husbandry because there are four option given because it is useful in producing pure lines of animals or because it is useful in overcoming inbreeding depression or expose harmful recessive gene that are eliminated by selection and the fourth is helps in accumulations of the superior gene so this is from the chapter strategies for enhancement in food productions there we have got this so outbreeding is an important strategy of animal husbandry because it is useful in overcoming the inbreeding depression that means option number 2 is the correct answer for this questions all right now let's see the next question now the next question is question number 43 a gene showing codominance has there are four options given first option is allele is tightly linked on the same chromosome second option is alleles that are recessive to each other third is 
both alleles independently expressed in the heterozygote and the fourth is one only dominant on the other. So this is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation. So the co-dominance has both the alleles which are independently expressed in the heterozygote which means option number 3 is the correct answer for this question. Now let's see the next question. Now the next question is question number 44. Which one of the following hormones though synthesized elsewhere is stored and released by the master gland? Options are given luteinizing hormone, prolactin, melanocyte stimulating hormone or antidiuretic hormone. So this is from the chapter chemical coordinations and integrations. There we have discussed about the varieties of hormones which were released by the endocrine glands of the human. So among this what is the correct answer for this question? That is the option number 4 antidiuretic hormone. So this antidiuretic hormone is released by the master gland. So this is the correct answer. Now let's see the next question. Now the next question is question number 45. Increase in concentration of the toxicant at successive trophic level is known as biodeterioration or biotransformation or biogeochemical cycling or biomagnification. So this is from the chapter ecosystems. We have discussed about this. So which among them is the correct answer? That is the option number 4 biomagnification. So biomagnification it is the process in which there is an increase in concentration of the toxicant at successive trophic levels. So that we have discussed in that chapter and we have discussed about the DDT toxicant. So that is the correct answer. Now let us move on to the next question. Now the next question is question number 46 you can see here industrial melanism is an example of natural selection or mutation or neo-lamarckism or neo-darwinism. So this question is given from the chapter evolution. So in the chapter it is clearly written the industrial melanism is an example of natural selection. So among this four option, option number one that is natural selection is the correct answer. Now let's see the next question. Now the next question is question number 47. The primary dentition in human differs from permanent dentition in not having one of the following type of teeth. Is it premolar, molar, incisor or canine? So in the chapter digestion and absorption in the first topic we have talked about this. So what is the correct answer? That is the option number 1 premolar. So the primary dentition in human is differ from the permanent one in the presence of this premolar teeth. So this is the correct answer. Now let us see the next question. Now the next question is question number 48. The wheat grain has an embryo with one large which is shell shaped cotyledon known as coleoriza or scatellum or coleoptile or epiblast. So this is from the chapter sexual reproductions in flowering plants. There we have discussed about the structure of monocots and dicot seed. So among these four options, what is the correct answer? That is the option number 2, scutellum. Remember the spellings is not correctly written. So the correct spelling is, it should be U, not A. So the wheat grain which is an embryo with one lurch which is shell shaped cotyledon is called as the scutellum. So wheat grain you know, wheat grain is a monocot, right? So this is the correct answer for this question. Now the next question is question number 49. The body cells in cockroach discharge their nitrogenous waste in the hemolymph mainly in the form of potassium urate or urea or calcium carbonate or ammonia. So in the chapter structural organization in animals we have discussed about the excretory systems of the cockroach that is the periplaneta americana that is the scientific name of cockroach. So among this option what is the correct answer? What is the nitrogenous waste which is released by the cockroach in the hemolymph that is mainly composed of potassium urate. 
So, potassium urate is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 50. Which of the following biomolecule does not have a phosphodiester bond? Monosaccharide in a polysaccharide or amino acids in a polypeptide or nucleic acid in a nucleotide or fatty acid in a diglyceride. So, in the chapter biomolecule, we have talked about this. So, which among them is the correct answer? So, in the question, it has asked that which of the biomolecule does have a phosphodiester bond? That is the option number 3 that is nucleic acids in a nucleotide. So, that is the correct answer for this question and we have already discussed in the chapter biomolecules. You can refer to the chapter along with you can also refer to the chapter molecular basis of inheritance. There I have discussed about the structure of DNA and RNA. So, that is the correct answer. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 51. You can see here the term linkage was coined by there are four options given T. Bovary, G. Mandel, W. Sutton or T. H. Morgan. Well, this is from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation. So, who has given the term linkage? It was given by T. H. Morgan which means option number 4 is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 52. Which one is a wrong statement? Mucor has a biflagellate zoospore. Second is haploid endosperm is typical feature of gymnosperm. Third is brown algae have chlorophyll A and C and fucoxanthine. And four is archegonia are found in bryophyta, pteridophyta and gymnosperm. So, this question has given from the chapter plant kingdom. So, among these four statements, you have to take the wrong statement. So, the first statement that says that mucor has a biflagellate zoospore. Is this a correct statement? No, because the mucor is a non-motile organism, which means that option number 1 is the correct answer for this question. Okay, now let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 53. Ectopic pregnancies are referred to as implantation of embryo at site other than uterus or implantation of defective embryo in the uterus or pregnancy terminated due to hormonal imbalance and the fourth is pregnancy with genetic abnormality. So, these are the four options given for this question and this question is from the chapter reproductive health. So, if the implantation of the embryo take place in other side than the uterus, then it is called as the ectopic pregnancy, which means among all these four options, option number 1 is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 54. Most animals that live in deep oceanic waters are secondary consumers or tertiary consumers or detritivores or primary consumers. So, in the chapter ecosystem, we have talked about this. So, which among this is the correct answer? So, the animals that live in deep oceanic waters are nothing but detritivores, which means option number 3 is the correct answer for this question. Alright, now let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 55. Which of the following disease is caused by protozoan? Influenza, rabiosis, blastomycosis or syphilis. So, in the chapter human health and disease, we have discussed the microbes that causes different kind of disease. That microbes include the protozoan, fungi, algae and bacteria. So, which among the following options is the correct answer? The option is given here. So, option number 2 that is the babyosis and so that disease is called as the tick fever in the cattle because the tick is the vector of this disease. Alright, so you can write in short that it is also called as the tick fever. Why it is called as tick fever? Because tick is the vector which carries this protozoan for the disease. So, this is the answer of this question. Now, let us see the next question. 
Now the next question is question number 56. In which of the following interactions both partners are adversely affected? Predation, parasitism, mutualism or competitions? So in the chapter organisms and population and the last topic we have discussed about all this interaction. So which among them is the correct definition of this question? That is the option number 4 that is competition. That means during competition both the partners are adversely affected. So this is the correct answer. Now let's see the next question. Now the next question is question number 57. Identify the correct order of organization of genetic material from largest to smallest. Now here all the options are given. So in the chapter human genetics you have discussed about all these terms which are given in this question like genome, then chromosome, then nucleotide and the gene. So what we have to do in this questions we have to arrange it on the basis of largest to the smallest compositions. So let us see the first one. So in the first one it is written the genome, then chromosome, then nucleotide and then gene and second option is genome, then chromosome, then gene, then nucleotide. And the third is chromosome, after that genome, nucleotide, then gene. And in the fourth, it is given first is chromosome, then gene, then genome, then nucleotide. So how you are going to arrange this genetic materials from largest to smallest? Let us see this. So the first should be genome, that is correct. Here also it is given. So genome you know, that is the complete set of the genetic material and it is haploid set, right? So that is the first one that it should be. Next is the chromosome. Here also it is written. Here also it is written. Chromosomes you know that is the condensed chromatin. After that next is the gene. So in the first part it is written the nucleotide that means it should be cancelled out. Next is the gene. Gene is you know that is the unit of inheritance and that passes from one generation to another generation. And after that, the nucleotide, the nucleotide you know, how does it form? It forms by sugar, phosphate and the nitrogenous basis. So that is the largest one. So among all these four options, option number two is correctly written. So first is genome, then chromosome, then gene, then nucleotide. So genome is the largest genetic material, after that the chromosome then gene and after that the nucleotide which is called as the which forms the nucleic acids right. So this is the correct answer for these questions. I hope you have understood this very clearly. Now let us move on to the next question. Now the next question is question number 58. A color blind man marries a woman with normal sight who has no history of color blindness in her family. What is the probability of their grandson being color blind? Options are given. 1 or second is nil. Option 3 is 0 0.25. Option 4 is 0 0.5. So from the chapter principles of inheritance and variations. So in the last topic we have discussed about the pedigree analysis and all the diseases that is the color blindness, then thalassemia, then sickle cell anemia. There I have also talked about the color blindness, you can refer to the chapter. So in this question, what it says that the father is color blind, father is color blind. So daughter will be the carrier of that disease and next is this grandson, grandson will have 50% probability, right, which means 0.5. So among this four option, where is the 0.5? That is in the option number 4. So option number 4 is the correct answer for this questions. Alright, you have understood this very clearly. So if the father is color blind, the chances that the daughter will have is of 50% and it is said as the carrier, whereas the grandson will have 50% probability of that disease, which means 0.5%. So among this four option, 0.5 that is in the Option number 4 is the correct answer. Now let us see the next question. Now in the next question that is question number 59. In photosynthesis the light independent reaction take place at photosystem 1 or photosystem 2 
or stromal matrix or the thylakoid lumen? Well, this is a very easy question and we have discussed in the unit plant physiology of the chapter photosynthesis in higher plants. So, which among these is the correct answer where the light independent reaction take place? It take place in the stromal matrix that is given in the option number 3. So, option number 3 is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 60. In which of the following both pairs have correct combination? First is gaseous nutrient cycle then the functions are given and the elements which are required for this nutrient cycle like the carbon and sulfur. Next is the sedimentary nutrient cycle nitrogen and phosphorus. Second is gaseous nutrient cycle that is given as nitrogen and sulfur and sedimentary nutrient cycle that is given as carbon and phosphorus and in the third option it is given that gaseous nutrient cycle has sulfur and phosphorus whereas the sedimentary nutrient cycle is carbon and nitrogen and in the fourth option you can see here that is the gaseous nutrient cycle has carbon and nitrogen gas whereas the sedimentary nutrient cycle has the sulfur and phosphorus. Well, this is a very easy question from the chapter ecosystem and is already given in your NCRT textbook. So, what is the correct answer for this question? You have to tick the correct combination. So, gaseous nutrient cycle you know that should be carbon and nitrogen and the sedimentary nutrient cycle is sulfur and phosphorus which is given in option number 4. So, option number 4 is the correct answer for this question. I hope you have understood it very clearly. Now, let us move on to the next question. Now, the next question is question number 61. The introduction of tDNA into plants involves four options are given. First option is altering the pH of the soil than heat shocking the plants. Second is exposing the plants to cold for a brief period. Third is allowing the plant roots to stand in water. And the fourth is infection of the plant by agrobacterium tumefaciens. Well, can you tell me the chapter name of this question? That was given in the chapter biotechnology principle and process. There we have discussed about the vectors that were used by the plants and animals. So, tDNA that means the Ti plasmid that initiate the tumors in the plant cell. So, among this four option what is the correct answer? That is the Option number 4, infection of the plants by agrobacterium tumefaciens. So, this is the correct answer. Now, the next question is question number 62. The wings of a bird and the wings of an insect are, options are given. First option is analogous structure and represent convergent evolution. Second is phylogenetic structure and represent divergent evolution. And the third is homologous structures and represent convergent evolution and the fourth is homologous structures and represent the divergent evolution. So, this question has given from the chapter evolutions you can refer to the chapters. So, the correct answer for this question it has asked that the wings of a bird and the wings of an insect are the analogous structure and they represent convergent evolution. So, among these four options Option number 1 is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us move on to the next question. Now, the next question is question number 63. Root pressure is usually acidic because low osmotic potential in soil or passive absorption or increase in transpiration or active absorption. So, in the chapter transport of plants, we have talked about root pressure. So, in this question it has asked that root pressure is usually acidic. Why it is so? It is because of active absorption which is given in the option number 4. So, this is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us see the next question. Now, the next question is question number 64. Human urine is usually acidic because first option is excreted plasma proteins are acidic. Second is Potassium and sodium exchange generates acidity. 
Third is hydrogen ions are actively secreted into the filtrate and the fourth is the sodium transporter exchanges one hydrogen ion for each sodium ion in peritubular capillaries. So in the chapter excretory products and their eliminations we have talked about the human urine. So in this question it is asked that human urine is usually acidic. So why it is so? It is because the hydrogen ions are actively secreted into the filtrate. So while discussing about the nephron you will get in the chapter. So option number 3 is the correct answer for this question which means that because of the hydrogen ions that are actively secreted into the filtrate the human urine is acidic. So that is the correct answer. For this extraction of copper from its sulphide that is copper sulphide when it is react with copper oxide it will be give you a copper plus SO2. Okay. So, this is the actual reaction 